Well, welcome back, AP Statistics students. Mr. Eicher here, looking at a probability question I crafted just for you. This question was based on a previous AP exam question, and I think it uh, only had parts like A and B, maybe A and C, but I've added a couple parts. Uh, a couple of things to mention. I uh, just want to point out the term here, uh, this variable, this random variable, number of dogs and cats, uh, we'd call it a, a random variable uh, because it they would be based on uh, randomly selecting a household, how many dogs and cats they would have, we'd see as kind of a random outcome from some random process. Uh, but the term I wanted to review that I didn't ask you about, um, these are discrete, this is a discrete random variable. Uh, you can't have 1.5 as one of your possible outcomes when you survey a household. Well, at least I don't think you can. Um, so because it's discrete, you have these gaps uh, in between. Uh, but this is a uh, histogram. A histogram. Uh, it's not a bar graph. It's a histogram. We have quantitative data on the x-axis, 0 through 7. Uh, but we would call this a probability distribution or a relative frequency distribution for x. And x is the number of dogs and cats that a household has. Um, so I just wanted to mention that in case you see these words or are asked about those words. Um, this is not continuous. It's not an interval of options. Um, they're discrete options. It's not a continuous interval. Um, so part A. Oh, the other reason I wanted to show you this is I don't think we've gotten to look at a probability question where you're given a, a relative frequency distribution like this one. Um, the ones I've done before are two-way tables, but I could uh, imagine that a question like this could be asked on this year's AP exam. Now, I don't think they would ask you to find the mean, um, but I guess it wouldn't take too long if they asked what's the mean of this distribution. You'd have to do 0 times 0 0.36 plus 1 times 0 0.24 plus, and then keep going until you get to 7 times 0 0.02. And then you just multiply and add those up. I don't think it would take too long to do that, um, but I don't, I don't think they'll ask you to calculate the mean. They surely won't ask you to calculate the standard deviation. They rarely ask that question on a normal exam, but um, asking you to calculate the mean of a discrete random variable like this um, is pretty common on the usual exam, but I don't think it would be common this year. But again, it wouldn't take that long to multiply. You know, you get zero here, you get 0 0.24 here, and then 0 0.14 here. It wouldn't take too long to multiply and add. You wouldn't even necessarily need a calculator. Uh, but anyway, on to the actual question. See, all these questions I could have asked, but alas, only 15 minutes. So we're told that any household that owns uh, more than three pets uh, is prohibited. Uh, what's the probability a household be in violation? So more than three, more than three would be all these right here. So we'd add those up. Um, please do not just put this as the answer. You definitely should at least have work. So to get an E on this, you'd need to show your work while you're adding, as well as uh, getting the correct answer, 0.17. Um, this part and this part aren't that necessary, but I'm just showing you as an answer key um, one way to think about this probability and what we're actually doing when we're adding those probabilities. Um, so if uh, a common mistake that students will make is they'll put the answer as uh, 0 0.26 uh, and uh, with work that would be a partial. Um, that is doing uh, greater than or equal to three, but it's more than three, not greater than or equal to three. Uh, all right, so that was part A. Hopefully you got that pretty easily. Uh, part B, on the original exam, I think part B was a binomial probability. But since binomial probabilities, I think, are less likely, we'll uh, check this out. I think the original, um, well, let's just answer this. Get ahead of myself. Get too excited. Given that a household has at least three, what is the probability that a household will have exactly seven? 
So this is a conditional probability. Conditional probability. And that conditional probability is written like this. Exactly seven given that you have at least three. So the given part is your denominator. Uh, and that number we just calculated in part A. So our denominator is this value, 0 0.17. And then exactly seven from the table, exactly seven is 0 0.02. Um, you could probably leave it like that on the AP exam. Uh, I would at least do like something like that. That, that would look prettier. Um, and I included it um, as a decimal there, so you can check that out. But again, don't just write this step. You'd probably get a partial, maybe incomplete if you wrote that. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised. You know, you could probably leave it like this right here, if you, especially if you're wanting to save time. If you have time, you can go back and multiply that out if you want. Um, okay, and then the next part, uh, I give you the mean of the whole distribution, that would be mu, and the standard deviation of the entire population, that's sigma. And you're told about this registration fee, and you're told about this uh, price per dog and cat. So the registration fee is $5 per household, and the $10 is per um, each dog and cat. And we'd like to know what the new mean and the new standard deviation is. Um, this one, I wanted to review this topic, multiplying by constant affects measures of center and spread, but adding a constant affects only measures of center. So we would have, um, the mean would be 1.65, the original mean, times 10, uh, and then plus that final constant. Uh, we're not multiplying 1.65 times $15. Since you're not paying $5 per uh, dog or cat, you're only paying $10 per dog and cat, and you're expecting 1.65 dogs and cats per household times 10 and then plus 5. So you get a mean of 21.50 is what um, they'll have to pay for their dogs and cats and registration fees and such. The standard deviation, however, which was that 1.851, that's only multiplied by 10, and you get 1851. Um, so this is an example of the uh, plus 10, or sorry, the plus five does not affect. Plus five has no effect on this measure of spread. Alrighty, so that was C. Wanted to review that topic with you. Uh, and then another topic that I think could be really a really good fair game for this year's exam that's low on the calculation side is this one. Suppose we have 100 households that we randomly select and we're calculating X bar, the sample mean. Um, describe the sampling distribution of X bar. Um, these formulas are on your formula sheet. And if you're ever asked to describe a distribution, uh, here I gave you a little hint that you should do the um, shape, center, and spread. Uh, but you should be thinking, if you're asked to describe a sampling distribution or any type of distribution of a quantitative variable or of a statistic, then you should do uh, shape, center, and spread. So we have the population distribution appears to be right skewed from that graph above, that histogram above. However, since our sample size is greater than or equal to 30 by the central limit theorem, the sampling distribution of X bar will be approximately normal. I can imagine questions that ask, um, you know, we check this condition. Why are we checking that condition? Uh, and then the answer would be, well, we need the sampling distribution of X bar to be approximately normal uh, to be able to answer probability questions. Um, so that was my shape. Uh, since we're selecting households at random, the center, the mean of the sampling distribution will be an unbiased estimator of the population mean so it will equal 1.65. I wouldn't recommend to try to use the notation because if you use the notation wrong, you would lose points, but the correct notation would be something like this, where the mean of the sampling distribution of X bar equals the population mean, which equals 1.65. So if you um, start selecting households at random and take 100 of them and you find the average, you're expecting that average to be really close to 1.65. Uh, and then lastly, since the population of households is very large, 
This is the 10% condition. We're assuming that the population is larger than 1,000 households. The standard deviation of the sample mean will be 1.851 divided by the square root of 100. Um, this formula is also given on the formula sheet. Uh, and here we do know the population standard deviation. And our sample size is 100. Uh, and this equals 0 0.1851. Uh, and that tells us how much we expect x bar how much x bar will vary x bar will vary from sample to sample sample to sample um, so that's the sampling distribution we have our mean is 1.65 our standard deviation is uh, 0 0.1851 you would not want to just write that you'd want to show the work how you got that answer. Uh, and then our shape is approximately normal based on the central limit theorem. Um, so to get an E on something like that, you would need all three parts, the shape, the center, and the spread. Um, okay, so if you have any time left in your 15 minutes to answer these last two questions. City official collected uh, 100 households, so that's same as above and found that the average number of cats and dogs in the sample was 1.1, should the official be surprised by this finding? Uh, well, we just stated that the mean was 1.65. 1.1 uh, seems far away from that, but we do need to consider the variability. If the variability is large, then maybe 1.1 isn't that far away from 1.65. Uh, but my answer here, I say yes, this would be surprising, since the mean is 1.65. The variability of the mean is 0 0.1851 that we just calculated. A sample mean of 1.1 is negative 2.97 standard deviations below the mean on this roughly normal curve. And uh, obviously trying to sneak in a z-score there. Um, now this z-score would be a little trickier to calculate without a calculator. I didn't make the numbers very nice for you. Uh, but even if you just estimated that it's about negative three, standard deviations that would be sufficient uh, and to be three standard deviations below the mean on a normal curve is an unlikely occurrence i would think it would be pretty necessary to mention that hey we have a normal curve here uh, because if you have a strongly skewed distribution then um, three standard deviations above above or below the mean might not be that surprising but on a normal curve that we just said hey the sampling distribution of x bar will be roughly normal since the central limit theorem uh, on a normal curve, negative three would be very far away. So it's gonna be an unlikely occurrence. And I think that would be a stronger response. So if you just said something like, um, yes, because 1.1 is far away and left it at that, that would probably be an I. If you said yes, because 1.1 is negative three standard deviations uh, away from the mean, that would probably be a partial. But if you said uh, that it's negative three standard deviations below, and we have a normal curve, so that would make it really unlikely. That would be a stronger response. Or maybe if you calculated the probability with uh, normal CDF, uh, that would be uh, an even better, stronger response. So would we have negative infinity to negative 2.97, zero and one, if you use the standardized values. Lower bound, upper bound, mean, and standard deviation. And then you could calculate a probability. Uh, okay, and then lastly, we have a sociologist conjectures that a nearby rural area has more cats and dogs than the suburban area mentioned above. Write the hypotheses and name the significance test. Um, you've had a lot of practice with these in these mock exams, but um, basically in this question, I wanted to review a lot of probability topics that I think uh, are likely on this year's exam stuff that's uh, lower on the calculation side. But also, uh, College Board's been clear that you'll have to be able to jump from kind of one chapter, one unit to another. So here we're jumping to inference, writing hypotheses. Um, I'm guessing there'll be some debate about my answer here, but since we know the population mean for the suburban area is 1.65, I'm gonna be comparing 
the rural area to that 1.65. And since we think they have more cats and dogs on average, then I'm using a one sample t-test for mu, where mu is the unknown population mean number of dogs and cats in the rural area. Uh, be really careful to define, remember to define your parameter. Um, the parameters we always use are either mu or p. We never use x bar or p hat in the uh, hypotheses. And it's really helpful if you use language like unknown mean or actual mean, true mean, population mean, something like that, to make sure that you're not referring to the sample mean. Um, now, the way that this question's been worded, I could uh, imagine that another acceptable answer, if you said two sample t test for the difference in means, uh, I think that would be acceptable. I think a better answer though is this one because we know, since we already know the population mean for the suburban area, we can then just do a one sample t-test and that would be sufficient. Um, but uh, thus ends mock exam number five. Thanks so much for watching this video. Hope that it was helpful for you. Give me a thumbs up if it was. Uh, and thank you again. Thank you for all your hard work going through these uh, countless videos and countless, well, no. it's funny when people say countless when I can count the mock exams. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, but I hope they've been helpful for you. Please message me if you have any questions about scoring or if you'd like me to look at your response or anything like that. Uh, I always love hearing from you and have a great day.